Trippy. There's Brother Trip. Now we're going to skip ahead. Constitutional rights. Yeah. Yes. With the flu. Do you know what I'm saying? Kids mingling together when the school shut down, when she shut the schools down, it, it almost shuts me down completely. So I'm not sure. I'm really sad. But I'd love to know that I'm not alone. And this is making me feel great. That because cop no matter there? what side you're on, that is obviously I'm conservative. On but uh, we should all be fighting for our constitutional rights. Emergency medical yeah. personnel are supposed to be using PPE the whole time. What's that? What brings you up to <laughs> Great question. <laughs> so I'll answer yours if you answer mine. Okay. Who are the militia? Uh, good. Who are the militia? The militia? I will tell you, and I'll tell everybody that's watching this live. Thanks for joining us out here, everybody. Here is what, who are the militia, the answer. Every able-bodied person in the United States is the militia, except for a few select politicians. That means every one of you, including you, Kyle, are the militia. It's time that you hook up, and this is obviously pretty evident, it's time that you hook up with your local militia, and if you don't have a local militia, pour no one up. No for you. Usually any kind of uh, good good search engine or Facebook or Instagram, they're out there. We're out there. We make ourselves available. We're not hiding our faces. We've been doing this for many, many years, so we're here. Well, I don't know. I've heard a lot of different numbers. I'm excited, whatever it is. Especially for the weather. Thank you. Okay, Nippy, this would be the person that was doing the filming. You got that Red Wings thing on. So, yeah, this gentleman that he's about to talk to is from the news, and as Brother Triple, Neppy, Lost Grimoires, whoever you know him by, Anonymous University, he noticed how many people was out there whenever he was there. This is still the time that he's there, because we saw him. Like in his video, he wants to play Where's Waldo, Where's Waldo. Well, we found you. And in another video. So, I'm going to keep scrolling through videos and find Brother Neppy Waldo. Dun, dun, dun. But listen to the estimate that this news reporter has to say about the number of people that have showed up. I mean, I'm guessing he's talking about the traffic and all that all around. Including the people out here on foot. But I can't be sure, so don't quote me. And this is by... I don't remember what he said his name was. But... Briarbart did this April 15th at 9.37 a.m. I'm guessing Colorado time, but it could be their time. I don't know. But here we go. down here, I've noticed. But let me tell you something. We came in about uh, about an hour ago. Uh, we don't live in about 20 minutes from here. Uh, the highways are jammed. They're, they're coming in from every direction. North, south, east, west. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Not in a state capital. Not in a protest. It's completely off of there. Tens of thousands of people here. If Governor Whitmer thinks that she's going to put her foot down and tell people the way things are going to be, I think her approval ratings today are probably about 10%. Maybe lower. Uh, but you look around, these people want to go back to work. 
They don't want to be told whether they can do gardening and whether or not they can go do a home improvement project or whether or not they can use their boat with a motor on it or go to their cabin up north. They want to be Americans, which is being free, and they know the COVID-19 thing is on the backslide. They were, they were okay with it for a while, but it's gone on too long. The economy is destroyed. And, you know, most of these people, I talk to them, never been to a, a political protest in their life. You know why? They used to have jobs. They didn't have time. Now they've got to go here because they don't have a job. A million Michigan residents jobless because of this whole mess. So tell, tell the breakboard audience who you are and what you do. Uh, I have a syndicated uh, program in the upper Midwest uh, on the radio. We're also on America's Voice News. Uh, we contribute to a bunch of other networks. Uh, but we've been here for a long time. I grew up in this part of the country. I've never seen anything like this. I've never felt the anger that I'm seeing out here today. I mean, look, these people just want to work. They want a chance to go back to work. That's all they're looking for. And it's absolutely uh, ridiculous. The governor says, well, I'm not going to let parts of Michigan go back to work when we've got a problem over here. It makes absolutely no sense. And this is the anger that's building, not only in Michigan, but in Pennsylvania, in New York, in Wisconsin, across this country. People are like, they've seen it. Michigan is down 5 to $7 billion in the state's budget already. Nationally, the effects of this shutdown are going to go on for years to come. We need to stop it now. Because the cure right now is worse than the disease. And these people know it. Whitmer just lost her space in line. I, if Joe Biden um, picks Gretchen Whitmer, uh, it'd be a disaster. Right now, what Gretchen Whitmer has done is put Michigan back in Donald Trump's column. Look at this. You think these people aren't going to vote? These people are all going to vote. Every one of these people, every direction you look here, they're all going to vote. Every one of them. Gretchen Whitmer is putting Michigan in Donald Trump's win column again in 2020. Congratulations, Governor. Look what you've done. Uh, maybe time to reconsider. She won't, but she should. And, and here's the other thing. How long are these people just going to wait? They're not. Uh, by May 1st, this is over. They'll take their chances. They're not going to live in their basement or their root cellars any longer. So, I think you said this morning that she said she's going to look at reopening in two weeks. Oh, uh, really? With this reaction, is this going to be able to... Let me tell you something. These people are ready to reopen today. These people are discussing, I'm looking at lawn care crews, and excavating crews, and construction crews, and all sorts of people here that could be working and are not. They would put nobody in danger. We're not five. We can take care of ourselves. We can look after ourselves. We can look after the public health. We're not going to be treated like children by a dictatorial governor. It's over. And if she thinks she can start considering or this or that, and maybe we can buy seats for our gardens come in. Really? Look around, governor. Nobody's buying it anymore. Nobody's buying your act. She has shown herself to be completely incompetent. Completely incompetent and tone deaf to the people of the state of Michigan. The party's over, Gretchen. If you hadn't noticed, look around. The party is over. And the party is advancing. And these people want to be American and treated like it from this point forward. All right, thank you. No problem. Good to see you. Good to see you. Now look right there. There's one of those police officers. And this little white thing back here is his mask. Isn't he supposed to have that up on his face? His face? For his PPE? State, local, it don't matter what he is. He's supposed to have that shit on his face. Face, 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 face. We're going to see if we can find Neppy again. I think the governor's orders have gone too far, and I believe in freedom and my constitutional rights. Do you I think small business? I do. What's your I'd rather not say. Sure. Um, Was it forced to close? Actually, I'm able to work from home, okay. but I know a lot of other people that aren't, and a lot of my small business friends are really hurting right now. Now, you notice she's able to work, but yet she's still flexing the rights of the people to come out there and stand up for other Michiganders. Come on now. Where the hell was everybody else in the state? I know people that haven't been able to get unemployment. They've been trying for three weeks and the system just crashes and they can't even get it filed. So what do you think of the turnout today? I think it's great. I'm glad people are here. Yep.
back up to find Nepi? Let's see. Because everybody's live feeds are going to get cut off in about 45 seconds. She has no right to step on our constitutional freedoms like this. Five. How far did you drive? Kalkaska. Three. Two, three hours. Three hours. One. Bam. And that's whenever all live streams went down. Dun dun dun. Although we are gonna try to find some more videos to add on to this to find Nappy. Okay. I haven't found a Waldo one yet. But, Michigan Governor Whitmer, my shutdown order isn't robbing citizens of freedom because the snow will do it. What have we heard about weather manipulation? Okay then. Saying that her state shutdown order is violating their rights because snow will keep them homebound. Anyway, Mish, Governor Gretchen Whitmer D. argued in a televised interview Wednesday. Whitmer dismissed citizen protests of police department's refusal to enforce and a recall petition condemning her extreme executive order requiring Michiganders to stay home, shutting down businesses and decreeing which goods and services may be sold and purchased. In an interview with news anchor Craig Melvin on NBC's Today Show, Governor Whitmer said that her shutdown order isn't going to meaningfully impact Michigan's order requiring Michiganders to stay home, shutting down businesses and decreeing which goods and services may be sold and purchased. In an interview with news anchor Craig Melvin on NBC's Today Show, Governor Whitmer said that her shutdown order isn't going to meaningfully impact Michiganders' ability to travel and live their lives because the snow will do it, quote. Well, that's some pretty nice shit. We've heard about weather manipulation and all that. That the weather will, because the snow will do it, blah, blah. But this is interesting. Whitmer dis missed a citizen's protest of police department's refusal to enforce and a recall petition condemning her extreme executive order requiring everybody to stay home, shut down businesses in Ukraine, what goods and services can be sold and purchased. Dun dun dun. And that was 17 hours ago according to this. Then we're going to go to three hours ago. Wilmer and governors in surrounding states plan to gradually start reopening states soon. Wilmer announced Thursday she and governors from surrounding states will work in close coordination to reopen the economy in the Midwest region. President Trump also outlined the plan, his plan, to get the economy going again. This is why, this is some welcoming news for more than a million Michiganders who are currently unemployed. Okay. Before I go any further on that, let's put a little on that so I know where I'm at. So, it's already been shown that 3.3 million, 6.6 million, 6.6 million, and 5.2 million are unemployed. Now, let's take 6.6 plus 6.6. That makes 13.2. Add 3.3. That makes... 16.4 then another 5.2 so we're at 
point six eight no not eighteen because we were already at thirteen then we went to fifteen or sixteen. So we're at twenty one point six million people filed for unemployment already. Twenty one million. But it says right here Welcome news for more than a million Michiganders who are currently unemployed. Now, how does a million Michiganders sum up to 21.6 million? 21.6 versus a million. Well, more than a million. I don't think you can call it close to that. She said it should be more than... 21 million Michiganders. Hmm. So, yeah. Back to what it says. But now the focus turns to opening back up and getting the people back to work, but it won't come all at once. We're all navigating something that no one has ever gone through before, Whitmer says. Whitmer announced she will work closely with governors from surrounding states to mitigate economic crisis COVID-19 caused. The economic shutdown is having a huge impact on people's home budgets, business budgets, as well as the state budgets, she said. We don't want to have to come back into this posture, and so we've got to be really smart. Hmm. But this was posted up three hours ago. Two hours, or four hours ago, now. Probably a few minutes before that one was put up. Whitmer discusses reopening the state in a one-on-one. -on -one with seven... Action News. Now let's see if this video will play. I highly doubt it because none of these videos really want to play. Maybe these are just pictures. Oh, I see a circle. Oh, I saw a play. Here we go. Nope. Electrical charges live at the heart of every hybrid. We've got ads. Hybrids. 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 Fudge sickles on the hybrids. Okay. Our coverage begins with 7 Action News reporter Simon Shaykhead, who spoke one-on-one -on -one with Governor Whitmer today to find out how she and other governors will reach a decision on when to reopen the economy. Governor Whitmer says she's been sharing a lot of information with the White House in terms of what Michigan is facing during this crisis. She's also telling us what she believes must happen before the economy in our state can reopen. Speaking with us through Zoom, Governor Gretchen Whitmer says a lot of important factors weigh into the decision on when to restart the economy in Michigan, currently shut down through the end of April. We've got to make sure that we're safe to re-engage. Among them, having sustained control of the rate of new infections and hospitalizations, enhancing ability to test and trace, sufficient health care capacity to handle a resurgence, and having best practices for social distancing at work. This has been a tough time. We don't want to have to come back into this posture, and so we've got to be really smart. Whitmer says her conference call today with the White House and other governors also giving her the chance. See that stupid fucking smirk on her face about everybody being unemployed and this deadly virus that just barely touched anything? Just saying. Hey, global virus tracker. 145, 563. Let's check that against another one. One forty six, eight seventy three. Huh. They just don't add up. Interesting. Anyway, back to this. And her stupid little smirk. 
to talk specifics about our state's needs. Making sure that the White House understands the incredible strain on state budgets across the country. Uh, making sure that we've got as much flexibility as we need as we try to, um, you know, balance budgets and, and meet the needs of our people. The governor says regular talks with the vice president, the treasury secretary, and others are helping. She's also posting to social media to express gratitude to California and New York for sending ventilators to us on loan. Hopefully in a couple of weeks when we know that our curve is really flattened because of the stay-home order and because of the good people of Michigan doing the right things, uh, we can send our ventilators elsewhere, hopefully. Whitmer is also saying she remains united with other governors in their approach to all of this, all of them identifying with the idea that they cannot reopen the economy until it is safe for everyone. Simon Shaykat, 7 Action News. Certainly good news. All right, Simon, thank you. And Republican... Now, let's think about this. You've got a Democratic governor that's overstepping her bounds by telling people they cannot even go to their own places that are not their primary residence in the state. It's one of her orders. In fact, I'll pause real quick and we'll bring that up. Okay, so I found something else that I have shared with people. April 16th, 2020. Michigan Department of Health and Human Services issues statement about COVID-19 death data. Additional statistics added to today's update. Lansing, Michigan. Michigan Department of Health and Human Services releases the following statement about today's update of COVID-19 death statistics. Being beginning Friday, April 10th, MDHHS staff has been reviewing death certificate data maintained in the state's vital record reporting systems on a weekly basis. As a part of this process, records that identify COVID-19 infection as a contributing factor to death are compared against all laboratory-confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the Michigan Disease Surveillance System, MDSS. If a death certificate is matched to a co confirmed COVID-19 case, and, and that record in the MDSS does not indicate a death, the MD MDSS report is updated to indicate the death and the appropriate local health department is notified. These matched deaths are then included with mortality information posted to michigan.gov slash coronavirus on April 10th this process added 30 deaths as a result of this week's assessment today's data includes 65 additional deaths identified through this metho this methodology In addition to today's updates, includes additional statistics and inclusions of the percentage of cumulative cases and deceased cases by Arab ethnicity. Now, why the fuck would they call that out? I don't know. We're going to show you that stuff anyway. Case fatality rate by country, respiratory outbreaks in congregate settings by county and syndromatic surveillance system data of coronavirus like symptoms from emergency departments. Information around this outbreak is cha changing rapidly. The latest information is available at michigan.gov coronavirus and cdc.gov coronavirus. Hmm. So, let's go to it. Ba -ba -bow. Find a testing site near you. No, thank you. That's a cute little picture that they made. 
Notice the little triangle there. There's no marks and stuff. Kind of reminds me of uh, some pizza gay stuff. But let's go down and pull up the cumulative data. Now, hopefully, people are looking at their own states and looking at the ages and stuff and the cases by the sex because they gotta divide us up somehow because if there's no division then numbers would be too great totals may not add to 100% due to rounding Hmm. Deceased, 57%, 43% for female. 45% of cases from males, 54% from females. So, cases by age. There you go. Now, cases by race. Do we really need to have a cases by race? I mean... It could be helpful, but every freaking person in here should be American. American. If you're born here, you become a citizen, and all that, you should be on under American. It don't matter the skin color, your background, your language, or language barriers, and all that. Like down here, Hispanic, Latino, ethnicity. Guess what? My partner would be considered that. And his mom is whiter than Wonder Bread. His daddy was as Hispanic as I've known. Great guy. But if you see here, they say it's hitting natives the most, and I'm, I'm not even going to say their labels, but you can see it right here. I'm tired of the labels. And people can yell and scream at me on my views American Indian was here before everybody else came a Native American or American has been here since they've been born here or naturalized as they like to use the word whatever but then you got Arab ethnicity. Now I understand there's some big towns up there in Michigan, possibly even counties, that are of major Arab descent or actual India Indian descent and all other countries. But notice, well they just had to throw multiple races in and other and unknown because they don't want to say something like a Japanese or Chinese or any of that because they found that all to be multiple races or other now like I say we need to get rid of all this here that I understand it's for statistical data. It can help out a lot. But why aren't we putting money into getting everybody equal so there doesn't have to be one by race? Let's get some science going. If you're going to use science that, oh, I don't know, wound up killing an extra 65 people this week according to their numbers, Hey, look, out of state. 
unknown. Confirmed cases and case fatality rate. Reported deaths. 144, 76. That's, let's see, 50. That's 220 cases. Let's see, deaths. Six deaths. And they come up to 6% of the case fatality rate. So, Michigan, hope you realize your fatality rate is including out of state and unknown data. Besides all the heart attacks, aneurysms, anything else that might have been an issue, like, I don't know, a gunshot wound. If somebody got shot and died, but they tested positive for COVID because they're in a facility that's ransacked with COVID or thrown in with some people that might have actually had this SARS-CoV-2, which they're probably coming out with SARS-CoV-3.2 here pretty soon because... You know they have multiple strains and everything else. But I'm going to wrap this one up because all this shit just pisses me the hell off that they can't even pull their numbers out of their ass to get the shit done upright. Oh look, data about places. Here's the regions. Hospital beds. Eighteen forty four, fifty four, fifty six, seventy six, eighty four, thirty five, twenty one, twenty three, or twenty one, thirty eight, twenty four, sixteen, nine sixty five, seven thirteen. You got twenty four thousand seven hundred and thirty seven, nice, seven thirty seven of hospital beds. That's your total. Now they can turn those into IC room, ICU beds if necessary by putting up the proper area restrictions and putting the proper medical equipment in there. So we look at those beds, they're only 1800